All right, let's look at chapter nine, starting problem number seven. Number seven, we want to figure out the net present value internal rate of return of the project. So we start with what's the initial cash flow? What are the intermediate cash flows? And this project is going to last for 20 years. So we're looking at cash flows one through 19 and the terminal cash flow, the cash flow in year 20. Okay, so in this case, uh, part A, or it says they bought land two years ago for $500,000. I don't care. That doesn't matter. Uh, that's a sunk cost. It says that uh, it would cost $40 million uh, for this expansion. We have to pay that. The market value of the land is seven fifty. dollars so yeah, I gotta count that. That is an opportunity cost because I could not do the project, sell the land for 750. I'm essentially paying 750 for it. We'll deal with that two million dollars uh, in Part B later on. Part C, the firm has spent. I don't care. Sunk cost. Um, I need to look and see if there's any networking capital down in F. Yes, you're gonna need additional networking capital. Additional means I'm putting it in. If it reduced my networking capital, it would be positive, but it's increasing it, so it's going to be negative. So my initial cash flow, and my initial cost is $42,250,000. Okay, so what about my operating cash flows? You have the revenues, which the revenues are going to increase by how much? $15 million. But 5% comes from sales of existing products. So we're only getting 95% of the money is what we call new money. So that's what we want to look for. Uh, the costs are going to be $7 million. But once again, we're assuming uh, the cost to produce the old stuff is the same as the cost to produce the new stuff, just to make it simpler. Uh, so $7 million, the new cost is just 95% of that. Okay, so we have to do the depreciation next. Depreciation. I don't depreciate the land. I just depreciate the equipment. Um, $40 million minus, it's going to be depreciated to a book value of $4 million over the 20 year life. So that's one million eight hundred thousand times one minus the tax rate which is forty percent plus my depreciation one million eight hundred thousand so my operating cash flows in this is my increase in cash flow every year years one through twenty is five million two hundred and eighty thousand so five million Two hundred and eighty thousand cash flow in your twenty five million two hundred and eighty thousand. But what else happens in that year? Well, I get to sell the machine or the the equipment, whatever it happens to be, for four million dollars. That's exactly the book value, so there's no tax consequence to that. I get my networking capital back. I sell the land for two million dollars. Okay, here's where I want to make a simplifying assumption. I want to explain it. Um, that value of the land, I'm saying there, $2 million, say after all taxes and fees. I don't want to get into the taxation on the land because it has to do with the basis of the land. Uh, is there going to be a different cap gains rate versus uh, the ordinary income rate? So just to keep things simple, I'm saying I'm assuming I could sell that land 20 years from now for $2 million after all taxes and fees. Uh, you can get deeper into that, more complicated if you want to, but not at this point. So add that up, that's $12,280,000. So now to get the internal rate of return, my calculator, this is cash flow zero, this is cash flow one, happens 19 times, this is cash flow two, happens once, it gives me an internal rate of return of 
3%. In order to find my net present value, I need to get the weighted average cost of capital. I need to know my weight of equity that has to be given to me. Uh, at this level, it has to. So, the cost of I mean, the weight of equity is 70%. The weight of debt is 30%. What about my cost of equity? Do that right here. My cost of equity is equal to D1. But look down in Part G. It says they just paid a dividend of three dollars. I need D1 so I have to multiply that by one plus the growth rate of five percent. That's different than uh, the previous problems. I think it's problem two and problem four. And my price, stock price is 34.50 plus my dividend is going to grow at five percent. So that gives me a weight average, I mean it gives me a cost of equity, excuse me, a .1413. Now my cost of debt um, is finding yield to maturity and then taking out the tax rate. So it says in part H we have seven years left and pay semi-annually, so N is 14. It's a 4% coupon, so the payment is 20. Future value is 1,000. The present value is the price of the bond. It sells for 970, so that's minus 970. Plug all this in, find IY on your calculator. IY is equal to 2.2522%. But that's not the number I want. I need to double that. So multiply that by 2, and you get 0 0.45045. Once again, there's a little bit of rounding. I did in Excel. I didn't write all the decimals out there times 1 minus the tax rate of 40%. That gives a weight average cost of capital of 0 0.10702, which is, of course, 10.702%. And the net present value is going to be 1610000 0.91. We do the project because this is positive. So again, to get this net present value, this is cash flow 0, cash flow 1 it happens 19 times, cash flow 2 happens once. Put in your weight average cost of capital, then you can compute your net present value. Look on page 183 to go through those steps on the calculator. And given these cash flows, you can compute this internal rate of return. Okay, let's look at question number eight. Question number eight, we're going to have the same type setup, cash flow zero, the intermediate cash flows, which are years one through nine, and then the cash flow in year 10, which is our terminal cash flow. So here we know the initial cash flow is $10 million. Um, there's no, nothing else that needs to be added in that initial year. My operating cash flows, my revenue, which is 2,500,000, minus my cost, which are 600,000, minus depreciation. So depreciation is going to be what's a $10 million machine minus a million dollar book value over 10 years. So that's going to be depreciation of 900,000 times 1 minus my tax rate of 40% plus the 900,000. That is an operating cash flow of 1,500,000. That happens in years 1 through 9. And in year 10, plus in year 10, I sell the machine for the million dollars. So this gives me a cash flow of two million five hundred thousand. Okay, so at this point I can do internal rate return. This is cash flow zero. Cash flow one happens nine times. This is cash flow two happens once. So that gives me an internal rate of return. Internal rate of return, that's an ugly R um, of 
0.106%. I don't know if I should do the project because I don't know my weighted average cost of capital yet. So let's get that weighted average cost of capital. It says that I'm 60% equity and 40% debt. This problem is going to show me two different ways to get the cost of equity and two ways to get the cost of debt. Uh, and they should be equivalent. In the real world, they may not work out perfectly right, but they should be equivalent, and they will always be the same in this book. So my cost of equity, I can find as uh, my dividend next year, which is $2. That was this year, I'd have to multiply, or today, I'd have to multiply by 1 plus G, over $25, which is my current price, plus it's going to grow at 4% forever. And once again, go back to Chapter 7 if you need to figure out where this comes from. That gives me 12% cost of equity. Cost of equity can also come from the CAPM. So the risk-free rate is 3% plus a beta of 1.5 times the market risk premium is 6%, so just 0 0.06 equals 0.12. So the market risk premium of 6%, if I said the return on the market, you'd have to say 6 minus the risk-free rate. So get that terminology straight. And once again, go back to Chapter 7 if you need to. Okay, so for the cost of debt, cost of debt, the easy way, if you have the information, you can say, well, uh, the risk-free rate is 3%. You remember this from Chapter 6, I hope. And it's a AA rated bond, and AA rated bonds have a premium of 2%. So the cost of debt is 5% multiplied by 1 minus the tax rate of 0.4. But we can also do cost of debt by saying the bond is uh, how long? It has a 10 years maturity, so n is equal to 20. The payment is 24 because it's the 4.8% coupon. Future value is 1,000. Present value is minus 984.41. This will give me an IY of 2.5%, double that to get to 5%. So my weight average cost of capital turns out to be 0.084, which is 8.40%. I want to do the project. The return beats the cost. But I can also find the net present value. Once again, the same cash flows, cash flow 0, cash flow 1, happens 9 times. Cash flow 2 happens once. Follow steps in 183. Make sure you put it in the right order. This is the interest rate you want to put in. And the net present value is 332.407.72. So that's 7 and 8.